What's up dudes, it's Gaz, and welcome to the Warframe video. So we're going to be giving you another week of these Nightwave tips and tricks, guys, and we are in the intermission season. It's week two. I uh, hope you guys have been having fun with the intermission season. I actually didn't even do all the challenges last week, funny enough. I just did the Hydralist one, like, 30 minutes ago. Just eked it in at the end, before the end of the week. If you have not been doing all the challenges, guys, like I haven't, like I've been missing a couple, don't worry, because there's actually a catch-up mechanic. So if you were to complete all the challenges from a certain week, uh, after you're done with all those and you have some leftovers from the previous week, they're just going to start popping up for you. So uh, don't worry too much. You can always catch up, guys. Okay, let's get into these challenges for this week. And our first weekly is Animator to put fully socketing three Iatan sculptures. So we'll go over how exactly I'm going to recommend you do that here, guys. But three Iatan sculptures need to be fully filled with stars for this. We're moving on to the second one, Cash Hunter. Find all the caches in three sabotage missions. Do keep in mind that the Hive sabotage on uh, Eris, it does work. It used to not work. They patched it to work now, so that's great. Moving on, we have uh, Not a Warning Shot. Kill 500 enemies. Very straightforward weekly right there. Should not take very long at all. Protector. Complete three mobile defense missions. So those are the longest missions in the game that are not endless, obviously. So, yikes. Uh, unlock three relics, so you could... Technically do three mobile defense fissures, although I would not recommend that. Then we have our two elite weeklies. Uh, Ascendant is the first one. Complete four halls of ascension on Lua. And then we also have kill shots to kill 1,500 enemies total throughout the week. So a lot of these guys you can cross, uh, cross progress. You could do a sabotage fissure uh, since there's open three relics, period. Um, that's going to be some nice cross, uh, cross progression. You could do a mobile defense fissure. You could do a mobile defense Lua mission and get the uh, Ascension Halls while you're on there. You can do a lot of cross progression, guys. And like this 1500 enemies one, there's another, there's a weekly to kill 500. And there's one to, uh, weekly to kill 1500. It literally is a very easy week in Nightwave, guys. Let's move on to these offerings. Uh, and there is a bit of a bummer. There's no Gauss helmet this week. Well, there technically is a Gauss helmet this week, but it's the Mag Gauss helmet. So, yeah. Uh, no uh, new helmet for Gauss yet, but we do have the Wisp Gauss helmet, which is nice. Um, so yeah, at the top we got the stuff that's always going to be here. Kuva, uh, Reactor Catalyst, Nitane, Vauban. Uh, and then helmets. For helmet recommendations, guys, I'm going to say the Wisp Gauss helmet is a top priority. If you have Wisp but you don't have this helmet, definitely make sure you get this. If you don't have Tenogen already for her, which I know there's some pretty popular Tenogen skins for her already. Uh, besides that, we have the Wisp Lampshade Helmet. Or not Wisp, uh, Baruch Lampshade Helmet. Uh, yeah, weekly reminder that Baruch does exist, guys. Okay, so don't forget he exists like I do. Uh, also, the Mirage Harlequin Helmet. I actually I have Tenogen for Mirage, and I prefer this helmet over the Tenogen. So, pretty good helmet right here. Definitely could recommend that one to you guys. They've also got the Garuda Bathory Helmet. It's not bad. It's, it's definitely not as good as a Tenogen, in my opinion, but it's definitely not bad. And for our Aura Mods this week, we have the Steel Charge, which is a top-tier Aura Mod. Make sure you got this one if you don't have it already. Rifle Scavenger is a bottom-tier uh, Aura Mod, so make sure you don't have this one. Like, don't waste your credits on it, in my opinion. Pistol Scavenger, definitely not anything that's top-tier, along with EMP Aura, so... Make sure you're getting Steel Charge and before even considering any of these other three guys, okay? Moving on to Cosmetics. Beyond that, we have the Heck Desert Camo Skin, the Sindo Dagger Axe Skin, the Dual Zorin Dagger Axe Skin, and then we've got, for Mastery Fodder, the Heat Dagger, the Plasma Sword, and the Dark Dagger. So that is going to be it for the quick overview, guys. Uh, yeah, we're going to... I'm going to actually show you guys how a Lua Ascension Hall works this week. Uh, if you were just here for that initial stuff... Peace out. Hope to see you next time. Um, let's actually go over the one, the first challenge. So for animator, there is lots of ways you can get Iatan sculptures, guys. They can be hidden in missions. Uh, you could. There's actually a secret strat that I have, but we're gonna just go over the basic strats. I'm gonna recommend if you have arbitrations unlocked, they are basically a guaranteed drop in arbitrations. Uh, maybe not entirely guaranteed, but if you stay there, they are very common drops on the rot rotational rewards. You can stay there for just five minutes in a uh, arbitration survival, and you will get some type of reward at the end of it. So, uh, arbitration's a good place. They're also hidden in missions. There's also trade chat. People will definitely be trying to, to uh, up those prices right now because they know people want them for the the uh, Nightwave challenge. So, if you don't have that, I'd, I'd say maybe try to do an arbitration. 
or look really hard in those missions. Um, there's also this weekly Ayatan Maru challenge that just popped up. It resets uh, at the same time the Nightwave does. So that one's a guaranteed Ayatan treasure right there, guys. So you need three total. So maybe if you got one from an RB, you bought one from Trade Chat, and you got one from Maru, like that would work. Although that's also going to be a problem because you're going to need those Ayatan stars. So once you've gotten the statue, you want to go over here. You want to go to the Endo station, the mod station. Uh, you need to pick one of these, and they actually have varied amounts of uh, stars that require from. So if you look at this one right here, the Ayatan Piv, this requires three stars. I believe this one does not, it does require an amber. So this is going to require the rarer, the more rare amber star to put in here. But it does require two blues, which is not too bad. So um, there's actually one of the Ayatan sculptures that doesn't require a blue. I'm trying to remember which one that is. It might be this. Now there's an orange in that one. Or it doesn't require an orange, rather. I guess they all require oranges. I could have swore one of them. But it's this one right here. The Ayatan Air sculpture does not require an amber star, guys. So if you have this, this will be easier to fill. And do keep in mind, if you are about to buy one of these from Trade Chat, buy them unfilled, guys. Because you need to fill them for this challenge. If you buy it filled, you're just going to have Endo there. And you're going to basically... You basically screwed yourself over at that point. Also, keep in mind, if you are MR10 or above, there's this auto-install button, which is pretty clutch. So, yeah, pretty uh, pretty safe, straightforward challenge if you have the materials for it. If you don't have the materials for it, it can be a bit of a nightmare. Uh, moving on to Cash Hunter, I definitely recommend the Earth Sabotage or Naglar on Eris. Those are the two places I recommend for this, guys. Uh, some people like the Void Sabotage. I've never been a fan of that one personally. Um, so I'm actually going to show you a build that is really great for this, and it's going to be Limbo. I have a whole video on this build, so you want to basically use this Limbo build to explode your bubble, like open and explode your bubble really quickly. That bubble destroys loot on the map. If you have loot radar, it shows you where that loot is that you just destroyed. So that's going to help you hunt down these caches really quickly. I'm going to link the video in the description, guys. Uh, that's really, really helpful for getting more rep every day, for getting these sabotage caches down like instantly pretty much. Not instantly, but as fast as you're going to be getting them. So definitely recommend that to you guys. Uh, the Earth one is the fastest, in my opinion. And, yeah, that's going to be it for that suggestion. Um, kill 500 enemies. You know how it goes. You just got to, like, basically play the missions and get the kills. I'd recommend Equinox, Saren. Uh, if you want to play Ember before Ember gets changed, just to, like, for old time's sake, sure. Mesa, you know how it goes, guys. Bring a good weapon and blow stuff up. 3D mobile defense missions, there really isn't much I can help you with here, guys, besides, like, just do the mobile defense missions. As I mentioned earlier, you could do a mobile defense fissure since there's a weekly to unlock three relics this week. Although mobile defense fissures are still slow. They take, like, six minutes each at least and usually not worth your time. Although it's very reliable to get your reactant filled up there since it, <laughs> you know, I'm sometimes having issues where I'll, like, run through the mission too quickly and, like, I don't get enough reactant. In mobile defense, they're so slow that there's no way you don't finish that mission without getting full reactant and opening your relic, okay? So definitely okay right there. Um, and then as I said, three relics, you could do really a lot of stuff there, guys. Uh, and then let's go into this Halls of Ascension thing. So I decided, you know, like, I always tell people, like, hey, just check out on, like, Reddit or, like, the wiki how to do this. I want to show you guys how to do a uh, Ascension Hall right now. So I'm just going to basically go to Copernicus on Lua, which is a uh, Lua capture mission. And the thing is, for these guys, you need to actually just know what you're looking you for. Are here There's a bunch of different rooms that have these special challenges in them. The uh, you need to, like, basically know what you're looking for and then just know what to do. Like, I, I got lucky here, and we actually got one to show up in the same room that Capture Target was in. So, um, that was definitely luck here. So, if you see this room right here, this is the Power Drink room. What you want to do is you want to actually, um, just like clear the room out so the enemies aren't shooting you, and you want to stand near these, like, blue orbs on the wall. I'm going to show you it in the video right here. Um, standing near that, that blue orb on the wall is going to drain your energy pool, and after you fill it with a good amount of energy, it's going to stay, uh, blue, and then you have to move on to the next one. There's, like, four of those blue orbs in the room, and once they're all filled, it's going to complete the challenge for you. In the middle of the room, it's going to open up, there will be a staircase there, and you get a guaranteed rare mod that is in the Exilus slot, or it can be a Black Exilus slot. And those are really good mods, so, uh, yeah, this is... It's very easy, guys. If you get this one, this, I'd say this is the easiest one in the game. Uh, and I got really lucky here. They, they could potentially have multiple challenge rooms on the same mission, so keep an eye out for those. I'm still going to link the wiki page in the description of this video. But as you see, we open the floor here. We can walk down there. You don't need to grab the mod to complete the challenge, but, uh, I mean, if you're doing all this work to open this room, you might as well pick up the mod, because you can sell that for plat. It might be uh, valuable for your build. And the power drift is very valuable on a lot of builds, just because it's more power strength. 
Uh, and yeah, guys, uh, you literally just, that's all you gotta do. You gotta do that four times. There's, you might honestly have some fun with it, in my opinion. Uh, but do keep an eye out for these rooms, because who knows? Like, I, I went through the rest of this mission. Spoiler alert, there's no other rooms in this mission. I just went to the extraction, and that's basically it. So, uh, that's it. And then the last challenge is kill 1,500 enemies. Uh, I'd say just use the same method that you were doing for the 500 enemies. Uh, Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, Normal Sanctuary Onslaught, uh, Kuva Survival. You you pick it. You could probably kill 1,500, 1500 enemies there, guys. So that's going to be basically it for the video. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over a couple other things about the update coming this week, guys. So uh, a lot of people have been speculating on ribbons, and I am one of those people as well. So uh, since the previous video, uh, I've got a couple more things to show off. So we've got... Uh, this Brock ribbon. So there's a Kuva Brock gun coming out and a lot of people were looking at the stats and stuff and they were like, oh, the Kuva Brock might be really good. So I decided to speculate along with them. We have a, a Brock ribbon right here. Uh, and yeah, I've seen people trying to sell these for a lot. So moving on, we have the Fragor Craniata ribbon. I got this one for cheap. That's why I bought it. I already have like another Fragor ribbon right here. So um, yeah, attack speed and melee damage, decent stats. Uh, Tomb Finger, I bought this just because the, the Catch Moon's getting nerfed. I don't know. I, like, I felt like I had to buy a ribbon for some reason, so I bought this one. Fire Rate and Toxin, not very good. I already have a better Tomb Finger ribbon than this, but, you know, I own this now, so whatever. Uh, as I said, another Fragor ribbon. Uh, Sindo for the Sindo Prime. Potentially could be good. Also have the Dakra Prime. I really hope the Dakra Prime becomes one of the best weapons in the game, honestly, because it is such a cool-sounding weapon, uh, like the name at least, and it's a... It's literally got Prime in its name. Why is it so bad? Uh, yeah, that's to me basically it. I've got like the Sylvan Aegis one, though. That Sylvan Aegis ribbon is trash. I don't even want to look at it right now. Uh, yeah, guys. Also, Grendel. Uh, Grendel's going to have a lot of health. Grendel's going to probably be a really, really good Umbral Forma candidate, guys. If you like his playstyle. He's got a ton of health. He's going to have a ton of armor. And I'm sure he'll, he'll scale well with power strength just with how his abilities are worded. So I might actually put Umbral Forma on Grendel. If I read his abilities and check out his playstyle, and he's not how I'm feeling, I'm actually considering uh, Umbral Forma on Valkyr, because Valkyr's claws are getting massive range buffs. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. I hope that you guys are ready for the update this week. I'm expecting it on, honestly, Wednesday. But, you know, if it comes out on Tuesday, I'm down for that as well. Or even Monday. Because, um, you know, Halloween is on Thursday, and I'd rather it not come out on Halloween. That would be really, really lame if it came out on Halloween. Uh, yeah, but I will talk to you guys next time. Please like, share, subscribe. Also, uh, make sure you, if you want to, hit that bell on the channel. Uh, I actually learned recently that if you sub and you don't hit the bell, it's basically like your, the channel doesn't even exist, that you're not subbed to it. So hitting that bell does help out uh, to see the videos uh, right away, guys. So if you want the new strats the, the day that they co we come up with them, make sure you hit the bell. I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.